Uh, all right. We like to uh, welcome Dr. Kim this morning. Good morning. Thanks for coming. Good morning. Thanks yeah. for all right. having me. All right. All right. And uh, go ahead, take it, Brian. I'm gonna get okay. us all dialed in here. So, um, Dr. Kim is an uh, acupuncture, and uh, she uh, she does the work at in Lanio Poco. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna. Um, Ask her how everything started uh, from day one. That you got into it, how you got into it, or um, how it started with Ooh. for you. I mean, I know yeah. it's in a, in a nutshell, just so everybody know that. They yeah, know. yeah, yeah. So um, I was sick most of my uh, childhood. I was a preemie twin, so oh. I was always sick. You know, with all the you know ear, nose, and throat stuff, um, strep throat, and then as I got older, I had chronic fatigue and. Um, got tired of being sick all the time and um, started searching for answers and in that process found more of the alternative medicine after going through lots of medications and right. doctors and stuff. And then uh, my boyfriend at the time, he started getting sick and he was diagnosed with cancer. So then my, my whole focus went over to him and then I wanted to know you know, how to cure cancer from another yeah. um, perspective. Um, but I found as I was talking to doctors in Western medicine, they nobody could tell me, yeah. you know, how you get cancer, why you get it. You know, they just had the typical treatments. <clears throat> and What kind of cancer he was uh, at the time? He had um, a rare blood cancer. Um, he worked with a lot of paints and solvents and stuff. So I think, wow. you know, it was a chemical environmental type thing. Um, and he was young. You know, funny uh, not to interject uh, on that note with uh, the paint because uh, they had cancer. And I was like, something about the mold. Yeah. Or they were saying the old paint or something. Yeah. So funny you said that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, and at the time I was so young, I didn't put two and two together, but oh. um, I started searching for any answer that was going to, you know, boost up his immune system and yeah. get him through um, while he was doing the chemo and all that. Um, and I came across an acupuncturist. I, I grew up in Los Angeles, so, you know, it's a, the mecca for everything yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah. So I um, was walking down the street one day, went into a shopping center and saw this acupuncture clinic. Um, walked in, asked this guy, you know, older Chinese guy, uh, how do you get cancer? And he said, oh, <clears throat> sit down. And he, he, he step by step explained wow. the whole thing. And I said, how is it that you guys know this, but yeah. the other doctors don't? And he said, well, because we have to know how the body works in order to fix it. Because, you know, they don't yeah. use medications and all that yeah so the eastern philosophy is always about like uh, the not, cause yeah wow yeah so instead of chasing the smoke away from a fire yeah you know we we put the fire out and we have to wow. know where the fire is in order yeah. to put it out so i started learning that um i didn't get into school quick enough to save him he ended up dying you know five years oh, after man. his treatments and that that feeling of not being able to do anything and watching someone that I love suffer and yeah, there's no yeah. answers and so it it made me want to save people from not only the treatments and all that but also the loved ones who have to deal with that so you had to go to like a special train a, co a college to yeah I went to um I did all the pre-med stuff um wow. at different places in Los Angeles and then um when uh, I was working at a doctor's office oh. in Los Angeles, yeah. uh, naturopathic, and there was a patient there that was starting acupuncture school, but it was an internship. Oh, okay. And <clears throat> it fascinated me because the acupuncture schools that I was getting ready to go into, um, there was two to three years of just book work. There's a and lot of stuff, though, hey? You have to, I yeah, mean, it's, it's, it's tedious. It's, tedious. A, it's a very intense education. Wow. But... How For many me, years was that? Well, it's it's about a six year education. Oh you can God. do it in less time um, total with. And all that's the, five days a week, like or pretty much. I, well, I, it's I lived there. Like yeah. seven days. I, I got done in about three years, a little over three so it's years. Constant it's, uh, studying. It's a, it's. I think it's harder than medical school because you you have to learn a whole new system. You have to learn physiology, anatomy, and all of the sciences, but then you have wow. to switch gears because now you're going into a Chinese 
Um, so it's like added, it's like added uh, information with what you already got from the regular. Well, a lot of people that go into it that are um, even chiropractors, mm -hmm. naturopathic doctors, people yeah. that are trained Western, they can't, they don't know how to take that education and put it in the back so that they can learn the philosophy of Chinese medicine because it's completely different. You think it's... Uh, is there an ego thing, like, or uh, not ego, but you know, I think it's, there's ego with medical doctors because yeah. their training's like 600 hours, and yeah, because if I'm from China and yeah. then you're American, and it's like, oh no, no, it's no, my kung fu is better than young kung fu, is kind of thing. But yeah. but it's it, it, it it's the money too, right? I mean, um, no, Chinese medicine. I mean, I did really well. Yeah. God bless me from the second that I became, yeah. you know, a licensed practitioner. But, right. Um, you don't really get into Chinese medicine to get rich and make money because no, as far as the medicine, it's not. It's not like the Western medicine. Is oh yeah, like, there's a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, they, like the Eastern is more humble with you know like. Yeah, we're we're pretty much taking anybody that wants to get well. Yeah, you know we yeah. we just feel, straight on. Yeah, yep, right. We will do yeah. it for you know. I have people that go to Costco for me and get groceries and we call it even. And then some wow. people pay me full price and wow, you know. Um, because, you know, we're here to do more than just make an income off people. Yeah. Even though, you know, we have to pay the bills yeah, and stuff. Yeah. But, no, um, I mean, I'm interested in, in because I never did have uh, acupuncture. Uh, it's, it's a miracle medicine. And um, it's too bad that medical doctors don't have more of an open mind to it. But when you take the profit out of medicine, yeah. it's amazing how people either stop going to a doctor or they get well because... Um, they're going, they're seeking truth. So, you know, with this COVID-19, what, yeah. what, what's your, I remember we was talking at the coffee shop. So what is the, your um, take on just this whole vaccine thing? And, you know, uh, I mean, people, everybody knows they, they, they've been masking for nine months or eight months. Yeah. But the vaccine, I don't, I don't trust that. I, 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 just for me. Yeah, it's, I mean... Vaccines in general. Um, I don't trust that. There's so many reasons to not trust it. Mm -hmm. um, and as soon as this whole thing started, I started researching the virus. Mm -hmm. um, I got into some medical websites and, you know, became a member. And I went through seven vaccine courses. Um, so the adjuvants alone, which are... Um, and what without getting too technical. Yeah, well, what, what does that mean? So they're so basically like... Um, they are turbo booster chemicals that will make your immune system and the vaccine supposedly work better, stronger. Um, the problem is they're so toxic uh, that so any, any good effect? that they do, they're actually doing a lot more harm than good. Um, they use squalene, shark, shark liver squalene. Yeah, so, so um, if you got a good um, uh, immune system. Yeah, no need. No need, right? And, and that's the thing. So um, instead of taking a vaccine, yeah. let's just teach people how to be healthy. Exactly. You know? Yeah, we was talking about like, you know, everybody's uh, talking about, of course, the masking, the distancing, just the manual thing to be aware from yeah. a person who might have the insystematic or what have you. But yeah. just be healthy. I mean, we all pretty much even decent health and uh, yeah. you know not we're not 800 pounds yeah uh we're not we don't have uh you know diabetes or whatever all of that stuff man that's yeah. just horrible it's it's sad to me that people are so scared of this and they forgot that we have a god-given immune system yes and it's yeah. really pretty much infallible yeah you could do just about anything to destroy your body and if you give it the right nutrition and the right you know, air and yeah. um, low stress and sleep and it'll come back. So getting back to, so um, all, all I know about acupuncture, there's, uh, there's different size of needles that you have to go to different uh, muscle tissue or because, or um, what, what, what is uh, in, in a snapshot of uh, so the, the, the needles are like hair. Okay. They're very thin. Right. Um, they can be thicker as well. Like um, there's different types of acupuncture. There's Korean, Japanese, Chinese, etc. Oh, wow. um, most of the needles for Americans are made pretty wimpy, <laughs> you know, because because wow. most men will say, "Oh, I, I'm deathly afraid of needles." <laughs> yeah, I've wow. heard that a million times. But yeah. people in America have this 
um, kind of a view of, of needles as being a hyper, you know, like one of the shooting yeah, needles yeah, or taking yeah. blood or um, a vaccination needle, right. you know, to get immunized. So uh, the needles we use, um, I don't use silicone coated ones, so it makes it even better. I don't believe in doing that, but um, they pretty much go in. And I've had kids that are really afraid yeah. and I'll have them put a needle in me first and then I'll just tell them how, to put how, it in my elbow. And how then deep I, do you go in though? I can go in, um, depending on the person, thinner people, you don't go in that far. Oh, so you make um, the decision to how, how deep Based it, on the person, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, if the person is like, say, uh, water retention or what have you, or one person is muscular or, you know. Yeah, it you, all depends yeah. on the build of the person and uh, how much fat tissue that they wow. have. Um, Interesting. Yeah, and you know, if you're treating muscle, then yeah. you would tend to go into muscle. If you're treating tendon, then you would put the needle in tendon. I'm not saying that acupuncture doesn't hurt because in some cases we evoke um, certain, you know, Pain. stimulation. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like how you put the stimulation. Yeah, because everyone's different. Yeah. So some people uh, will feel pain, yeah. but it, acupuncture in general should never be painful. But you will feel stimulation. You will feel achiness. Or you will feel kind of a heavy sensation or like an electrical shock sensation. So um, a person who's, you know, just say uh, we got a tennis elbow, what have you. I mean, so you do acupuncture, you don't have to get it massage or whatever. The acupuncture is the one stop shop or well, how, how should I say it? Um, um, I don't think anything's a one stop shop. I think yeah. that it takes, you know, a mm. multifaceted um, approach in a lot of cases. But I can say that most people don't come to acupuncture first. We, we're called the come to me last doctors. No, no, that's true. Because so, yeah. I always, first thing I, I'm thinking, okay, I have to go to a sports medicine. I gotta get this guy go deep into my muscle. Yeah. And, and never, did, it's like the last thing, oh, you know what, last resort, um, I may go to an acupuncture, but I never did. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much, and yeah. I think it's lack of education and understanding yeah. Yeah. about what acupuncture. Lack of knowledge, yeah, because yeah, I don't um, have any knowledge of it, you know. So, um, Typically, when someone comes to me, there's a lot mm. of pressure and obligation and expectation mm -hmm. that I am going to heal them, that they don't have to go anywhere else after that because right, there's right. nowhere else to go. Right, right. They've taken the That's pills. That's the last stop to you. Yep. Yeah. You yeah. know, they, they're down to, you know, whatever desperation. Yeah. I, I just had last Saturday um, after kayaking, I had a phone call from a, a young guy who's um, a landscaper mm -hmm. and he literally as he's working i guess like thursday or friday he pulled the muscles in his shoulder and he was in agony so i took him on as a patient um saturday afternoon mm -hmm. after i got home and um he was in a lot of pain he was very very miserable and so you put all the the, the needles uh, you know i don't i don't put anything in the actual spot oh, wow. um i go distal so um, they're usually in the foot and the ankle and sometimes in the hand. And so wow. he was probably 30, 40% better um, the first night. He could move his shoulder. He could move head. and he felt better. He yeah. had to sleep on the floor before he came to me. So he actually still couldn't sleep. So um, wow. the second day, Sunday, I saw him again in the afternoon. Um, I did a second treatment, spent a couple of hours with him. And then Monday, he was supposed to come back in, but he said he, not only did he sleep in bed, but the pain had gone down substantially. So um, how long does it, like, see a session for, like, that guy? Um, it's like about an hour or two hours? Typically, or? it's 45 minutes with the needles in for pain. But yep. honestly, some people that come, like I said, we're the come-to-me-last doctor. So I don't have a set time with a patient. Right. If I... If I have other patients coming in, then I'll work people in and I, I will yeah. spend the time that I need. Everybody knows that if I am working with you, I'm going to make sure that you get out of it what you came for. Right, right. Um, I try and give my all every single time. I uh, can't always do that. But um, if you're coming in and you're in major pain, mm -hmm. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get you to a place where you can go home and actually, you know, have wow. severe, you know, relief from that. I remember years back, I, I pulled my... I think I hurt my neck, but it was trapping down my trapezius muscle. It was, I would say, weeks, and it took just um, not not an acupuncture, but somebody to really just go deep tissue. Yeah. But it took it took a long time. Yeah, because when when the <clears throat> pain is deep like that, um, all pain is and disease in general, any mm -hmm. symptom that you have, it's blood not flowing. 
mm-hmm. and it just depends on how long it's been stagnated or sitting there. So if you know if water sitting eventually becomes you know dirty and then yep. you get mosquitoes and you get bacteria and stuff, so um, blood not flowing in the system if you know like a headache you mm-hmm. get the blood right. you know it's just sitting there yeah. same thing it's it's just in the shoulder or the neck or the ankle or whatever the injury is so all we're doing is giving energy back to that area to push the blood and once the blood's moving on so its you're own just again, releasing it it's like um opening up the dam like in a sense yeah. loosening the yep. the bricks so the dam opens there's up and there's energy. a better yep. blood flow exactly and that's all health is is energy and blood simultaneously flowing did you ever have uh, acupuncture or I, I have oh I have. okay yeah yeah, yeah Ex- i've had uh experience with it and I, i'm kind of familiar with the the process and, right. and the you know the the method of healing with energy and blood flow yeah and you're basically uh helping the body heal itself exactly really. yep and um you know chinese uh invented this thousands of years ago yep. yeah what blows my mind is when it comes to something like acupun- acupuncture is somebody had to first decide like this is a good idea thousands of years ago and i know the history behind that it's very fascinating it, it must be because uh, i always thought about that and i'd like to talk to you about that yeah but uh but first you know um i i noticed that you have um where people can find you first of all yes and you have a Facebook and um, probably some other other ways to yeah. find you as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a social media kind of person, uh-huh. but um, I started the Facebook page um, the beginning of this year. It's and necessary nowadays. You know, it, it's nice for people to be able to find me. Yeah. Um, I've always gone by word of mouth, so you know, having the Facebook page is kind of been All right, more we're promoting you, too. man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sharing yeah, my yeah, knowledge. Exactly. And, um, I've had and that's what it is. It's a very well put together uh, Facebook page, and uh, thank I, you. I, I had um, I always like to do a little research on um, uh, on our guests before they come in, and I, I was looking through this, and I found that um, macular degeneration i wanted yeah. to ask you about that what what exactly is macular is that doing to with the dealing with the eyes the macula yeah so it's usually a disease that hits people um 60s and on okay um and it causes blindness so when you're these things keep oh. sliding off my tiny head oh, no. so people that have macular degeneration when they're looking straight ahead um, they have the peripheral vision, but they have like almost a, a circle kind of uh, blocking their straight vision. So in front of them, people are fading out. Um, they look gray. So driving, you can't decipher. So you can't drive. No, nope, can't drive. And then you just you start losing your eyesight to the point where you go blind. So what what do you think is uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's many different things that could be the cause of that old age yeah. uh, diet etc cetera, etc cetera. it's really nutritional for the most part it? um yeah. it's a lack of glutathione and, and different nutrients See, that it the, goes back to nutrition it's all nutrition yeah. um exercise um you know when people grow up um on you know boxed foods and fast foods and convenience sodas i have patients that come in for symptoms that I don't even put a needle in them. I just tell them, can you just go home and drink water? And come back and then see And they see don't come back because, wow. <laughs> because they just needed water. They were dehydrated. So, um, I'm a waterholic. I drink a lot. <laughs> I too. I, I'm really um, interested in the, the macular degeneration because um, as of lately, since we, me and Brian started this, I've, I've been uh, on the computer doing a lot of editing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, thank I you, thank you. Yeah, and I don't know if this is a scam, but there's, you know, people are on the computer. The blue light or the blue yeah, lenses, yeah. Hours a day, and yeah, I guess the computer emits some kind of uh, radiation, damaging yeah. uh, thing to your eyes. So I, I bought this. Oh, my wife bought it for me. Thank yeah. you, honey. And I look like a goofball, but it works to protect it, man. 
Yeah. I'm hoping it will. Yeah, you know? it, it's super important. I I found out about the macular treatment. I was trained in Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. um, which is why I switched from a, a, a school in America and I decided to go out of the country because the... Indonesia, yeah? Sure. Um, Sri Lanka. Yeah, so mm -hmm. Southeast Asia, the, the school there was an internship. So when you... When you walk in the door, you're Dr. Berger, here's your needle, and there's your patient from day one. Wow. And so I, you know, the book work is on your own time, and then you come into clinic, and you've got hours and hours of cancer patients, age patients, and, you know, people that have degenerated to the point where wow. there's nothing more Western medicine can do. So we have to be the answer, or they give up. Wow. So when I started learning about the eye points, we went to Sri Lanka, and all of us, um, at the time I lived in Arizona, um, we all got our uh, eyesight tested at the um, the doctor, and they were all questioning us on why we're getting this done. And I said, well, um, we're going to go to Sri Lanka, and we're going to do these special eye points, and then I'm going to come back in three months, and I want to get tested and see if it worked. And he goes, yeah, I don't see it happening. And I said, well, we'll see. So three months later, I went back. And how long you stayed there for? Uh, well, it's three, month at, oh, three, three months, months yeah, at a time. Yeah. So we did the treatments and... Um, oh, so you had to be uh, from white belt to black belt, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's really... Because wow. you, you can't learn a lot of these points in the United States. You can practice them, but they, yeah. they can't be taught. So we went out of the country. That's We did these, these advanced acupuncture points. We all came back. And when my doctor saw my eyes after that length of time, he couldn't... He said, I've never written a prescription for a better um, eyesight. Wow, well, I, so, I, I, I find that very interesting yeah, and man. That, um, hopeful for people who, I mean, I know tons of people who make their living off of staring at a computer all day long. And it's and TV uh, and it's the yeah. iPhone. The swiping, oh, yeah. the iPhone, yeah. 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 It's a lot of extra, um, yeah, I mean, everybody is affected these days, um, including, you know, kids are now being affected. Um, you know, what's fascinating um, and it wasn't really something I wanted to get into because it's a really intense treatment. You have to do tr two treatments a day, and it's 10 treatments long, so you have to space them out so that you're not seeing them too often but not getting enough, you know, or, or mm -hmm. giving enough time for healing. Yeah. Um, I, I knew the, the treatment, but I hadn't done it for 25 years. So this lady in, um, in Haiku called me and she said, I'm getting ready to fly to New Jersey for this clinic over there. It's mm -hmm. very expensive and it's, you know, and she was in her 70s. Um, I know you do acupuncture. Can you help me? She said, you know, I'm going to go there and get the treatments and then would you do the follow ups with me? And I said, well, why don't you just come here and let me do the treatments on you? Mm -hmm. It's not going to be seven grand and all the flying and hotel and all that. So she came and she was kind of my guinea pig patient. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know what to expect because she was quite advanced in her disease already um, and going blind already. And she got tested, came for two weeks of treatment, so 10 treatments total, went back for her follow-up. 70% improvement already. Oh, that's, that's and wow. she was just... That's amazing. Yeah, it was wow. really that's, exciting. That's, so wow. that kind of started the ball rolling. And, you know, and then, you know, as soon as she got the results, then I was able to call some of my older patients and, you know, say, hey, you want to come? And no, that's big. Now, now that that uh, that this this lady you're talking about, does, she, does it go back to where you were the last resort again? Or did she do other things or? She, she had already been getting the, um, so they have a sort of a chemotherapy um, type of chemical that they put, they shoot it with a needle. Talk about needles. They put it right in the eyeball. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. You have to go to Oahu. Um, most of the clinics here refer them to Oahu for the shots, or you can get it done here, I think, at certain places. Um, so she had already been for probably a couple of years doing that. Oh, that's amazing. So I wasn't really the last resort. I was um, the only other answer besides what she had already been doing, which she, nothing was working for her. So in, in a way, I guess she was, it was the last resort in a way because um, she, she continued to degenerate and they kept saying, well, and this is what they tell patients when they're diagnosed, mm -hmm. if you don't do this, we don't know 
if it will reverse or if it will slow the process down. So you better just get the shot. And it's painful. It's a traumatizing. I mean, who wants a you know big needle in their eyeball? Uh, not me. <laughs> so wow. you know, it, it, it's a. It, and my treatments are intense, but even um, the the woman that's on my Facebook page, um, which one? Maxine in the corner. Right here. She came in with her husband. Her husband was a patient. The VA sent him over for some hip problems and um, back pain. Yeah, that's Maxine. She had lost her eyesight so badly that she would sit. She never talked to anyone. She'd just sit on my couch while her husband got treatments, and she'd cry. And I finally said, why oh are God. you crying all the time? And she said, I'm going blind. I've got macular degeneration. They've given me no hope. And I said, well, I can help you. And she said, no, it's okay. You know, she. I don't know why she wasn't open to it, but... Um, I don't know, probably for a month, she sat on my couch with her husband in the other yeah. room getting a treatment. And I then Susan, the first patient to come in, and they got to know each other, and I told her, Maxine, I called her and I said, Susan's eyesight has reversed 70% in the past two weeks. Just come. So she came, um, she sat on my couch waiting for me to get done with a patient, and I had magnets that I had on my truck, which I'd taken off and put on my refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So it was probably 20 feet. Um, so I came out and she's looking at the sign and she said, what does that sign say? And I said, you can't read that. And she said, no, I can't see it. I said, oh, it wow. says West Maui acupuncture. Yep. It's the sign on my truck. And she goes, oh, wow. So I take her in for the first treatment. 30 minutes later, she comes out, sits on the couch. I go back in give the other patient yeah. a treatment. I come back out, she's crying. And I said, oh my gosh, are you okay? What's wrong? She said, I can read the sign. I can oh. see the sign. How's that? <laughs> wow, that's, so Dr. Claire, yeah. that, that's emotional right yeah, there. It was, wow. Oh yeah, it, it's, it's phenomenal. But she looks good. Do her, Dr. Kim, I want to say that um, this looks like uh, uh, on your uh, Facebook, West Maui Acupuncture, uh, this is your patient uh, and giving her testimony. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, you know anyone out there. Um, check this out because yeah. um, just from what you explain, I, I'm it's a miracle. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go and and actually watch this. Uh, this is vital this, information. This it is. Yeah. And um, another thing, what I noticed as scrolling through your Facebook. Um, See, good. We got a big TV. We can yeah, check it out. Yeah, it's awesome. Is you know uh, among other like um, not as uh, you know dire you know, uh, symptoms like losing your eyesight, but uh, reverse aging, <coughs> skin, wrinkles, and facial lines. That's more of a, you know, cosmetic and uh, yeah. uh, just to make yourself feel good. How, do, how does that work? And, and, and what, what kind of, um, what kind of um, process do you do uh, or something like that? Well, you can see um, my patient with the needles in. Um, and actually the, so I learned cosmetic acupuncture in school also. And I had a patient when I was in school that um, we were each assigned for one month. And she was in her 70s already and Native American with really rough sun damaged skin. And so I was like, oh, gosh, this is going to be horrible. What, you know, it actually worked. And so I was really excited that I saw the results as a student. Um, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to help people, you know, regain their eyesight and get rid of migraines and cancer and stuff. Yeah, the, the big, but, the biggies. Yeah, the you know the big emergency type things that keep you alive. Sure. Um, but um, I got into this because um, I had some patients that were requesting it, uh -huh. and I said, you know, I'm not really into the cosmetic stuff. It's kind of foo foo to me. And but then I had to get my continuing ed classes for my license mm -hmm. every year. So I took the cosmetic facial acupuncture just to get the hours in. Right. It was so much fun. And I started asking my patients if I could get 10 guinea pigs that I could practice on. Uh -huh. And it's a miracle. So, so what? Um... So it's not just cosmetic. I actually work on the whole body. So I'm correcting the spleen, which is a lot of the sagging and the... Um, prolapsing and the you know kind of the loose skin and then liver this, for this blood flow yeah so i'm actually correcting the organs 
while I'm working on the face. Okay, so this thing about like Botox and yeah, so it's it's basically kind of to replace all that stuff. Yeah, and, and the body does itself, but with the help of acupuncture. Yep. amazing. Yep, facelift, tightening. Um, the the wrinkles have been the most fascinating thing. Mm -hmm. I never expected to see the forehead, the lips. I have, um, within the first treatment, wow. women who are losing all of the lines around the really? lips and the crow's feet, and it's, yeah, it's a miracle. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun, I'm enjoying it. I, I think it, um, this is all new to me, uh, to have, um, you know, uh, if, if you look in the mirror and you find that, like even for myself, I'm like, Man, I, I'm getting old. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, I won't do anything about it. You know, just that's the way it is. But, yeah. um But if it's really excessive and it's really bothering you, it's good mm -hmm. to know that acupuncture is one method that you can address those things. Yeah, because the Botox, what they're finding, and you know, I didn't know anything really about it. I'm, I just turned 52, and I mean, you look happy like birthday. 35. Happy birthday. Well, in April, but it was kind of a lonely birthday with all the lockdown stuff but right. um i'm in the sun all the time and i started thinking wow oh, i don't want to you know age and look old so i started doing it on myself and doing some of the skincare stuff and it's it really does work because um, you're in the sun every day yeah pretty much uh, almost yeah yeah I'm on the, especially during well season i'm on the ocean you know so five seven hours a day what are you, what are you doing surfing or just out i have boat? a hobie kayak i'm i'm one of the very few hobies out there that aren't loading a bunch of you know fishing rods and wow. catching fish okay. yeah yeah well, i've we, been on my hobby for a long we, long time maybe we have to have a follow-up um episode to talk about your your hobby um oh yeah this is yeah. only oh, part gosh. one this is only part one yeah, i take yeah. a lot of people i should sell hobies because um i've sold so many of those kayaks for adventure sport because i take people out i've got three kayaks and I take people on the water all the time, especially during well season, and give them ocean safety tips and, you know, make sure that they're out there, you know, having fun safely. Since we're on skin, so uh, is it still for real that between 11 and 2 is the best time for sun? Well, what yeah, is, is that um, a myth or what, what's no, your... No, there, there's yeah. a certain time, yeah. I think, where the yeah. UVB rays are yeah. the strongest. Um, and so... So it, before 11, after 2... Yeah, I mean, you can feel it. Even yeah. when I'm out on my kayak, I go yeah. out about 7 in the morning. Yeah. And then probably around <clears> noon time, <throat> my skin's starting to say, hey, I don't wear sunscreen. I've you never don't at all? Okay, no. see, that's amazing. You're doing all of this stuff, but now you, you're not protecting your skin? No, yeah. I, I use coconut oil. Um, wow. And I, I wear, you know, I wear protection with clothing and stuff. But uh, um, right. uh, UV I, clothing? Yeah, I, I, I do oh, okay. UV clothing on my top. Oh, those, and those then, are great. Yeah, my, I, I was taught in school that um, SPFs cause skin cancer. Oh, so my goodness. I, I've seen more people damaged by wearing sunscreen. It, if you don't have skin that's supposed to be in the sun and you're wearing something to keep you out in the sun, nothing can prevent you from having damage. Wow. You know, so SPFs are actually, in my opinion, I know that in the skincare world, like all the classes I took, they're saying, you know, put SPF on every day. But if you eat well and mm -hmm. you hydrate yourself and you take care of yourself, there's actually foods that become, you like know, protective, sun protectant yeah, yeah. In Interesting. just by nature and the melanin in your skin. No, because your skin looks great even though you're there every day. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's uh, awesome. It, I, I do take care of myself. Yeah. Um, How about your face? Do, do you put any nothing on your face? Nothing at all? No. Wow, that's you're the first water athlete that you know. Like uh, for instance, I was uh, I'm a big Laird Hamilton fan, oh, and he yeah, and it's like um, he, you know, he put you know whatever he put on his body, but your skin yeah. it's just incredible. That's every day. That's I, mean, I keep a hat on most of the time, yeah. but I grew up in L.A. I've yeah. always been in the sun, yeah. and I think. Jeans has a lot to do with it as well. My grandma yeah, was get, in her 80s and she looked jeans. amazing. Because, you know, some, uh, I, not to um, go on like a certain people's race, but, you know, like Caucasians, they tend to. Yeah, they age a lot more. A little bit faster yeah, than, because you of know, the oils in yeah. their skin. So, um, like, certain of my classmates, I'm 55 and I, I see certain guys and I was like, wow, I mean, they were like, like way older than me. But, you know, I'm not trying to put them down. Yeah. It's just the nature of their background. You know, yeah. And I think, you know, a lot of um, 
people don't drink water. It's one of the 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 water, most water, basic water. free That's things it. you can do for yeah. your health. Yeah, look you at know? Brian. Yeah. What, what are you drinking today, <laughs> Brian? I know you. Oh, we gotta we can't uh, publicize. So oh yeah, we can't yeah, publicize. Yeah. But also, you know, <laughs> I, I, we we gotta we gotta get away from using plastic bottles. Mm -hmm. being, yeah, I I have uh, an alkaline system at home, so I alkalize. So my can water. I buy some water from you? <laughs> I'll give you some. <laughs> yeah, you can line up. <laughs> so, let me ask you this. Uh, as far as what is the best system, since uh, not to jump up the subject, but we're in the su subject of wellness. What is the best system, not too expensive, to hook up to I got water lux. Um, I did research, and my, my I have a twin in Los Angeles, and she drinks um, the Kongan water. She got the system. She has a lot of health issues, Um how much? What, what's the system goals for? Or can it, like it's like kind of over pricey? four grand. It's pretty expensive. This one was Is something cheaper. Like Twelve hundred. Okay, that's more. You know, my um, take. Yeah. I didn't want to spend a fortune, yeah. and I was already buying um, the water from the store with the plastic, and I right. was so tired of the. So plastic. the water, you can change the water. Like if you're taking any. Uh, medication or pills, or whatever you know, the change the yeah, kind it of goes like from I think um, like a a two point something yes. a, a acidic. It goes all the way up to like an eleven. So you got alkaline. that one? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I just push the button and then that's, it so takes twelve hundred bucks. Okay, yeah. that that's more. Uh, yeah, and it has useful. you know you can it's so ones under the counter mm -hmm. and then ones over the counter. Um, I got the over the counter one, but then my faucet didn't work, so I had to put a hole in the countertop and get the extra. Okay, you know, so what, what's the name of that company again? Waterlux out of Water Florida. Lux. The, they they were absolutely incredible. The shipping was like eleven dollars for the thing. I mean, I was shocked because it's a heavy unit. Wow. I think it came in can five you, can days. Can you find that? You think? Oh. Yeah, oh, they're out oh, of Florida. They're yeah. like a family-run business, and she spent a lot of time on the phone with me because I was kind of picking yeah. her brain about you know units and you know what i wanted um yeah. i didn't get the most expensive version and i didn't get the cheapest i kind of yeah. got like and the in between yep okay yeah yeah so 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 water is key uh, water is key <laughs> and alkaline water i think is humongous because um you know i've had people say that they don't believe that but See, um, alkaline, when you see. alkalize your blood, n no, no disease can live in alkaline in an alkaline environment. Cancer can't live, bacteria can't live. So if you alkalize your blood, and it's always at that, I, I want to say it's a nine or nine point five or something. Wow. You can't get sick, and if you do get sick, it's gonna, you're going to recover very quickly. Yeah, and then uh, you know tying it in with what you do with your acupuncture, yep. um, like you said earlier, if somebody comes in and you're like, wait a minute, why don't you go home? You know, uh, yeah. hydrate yourself, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. You know, it, there's a difference between... I've done a little research on, on water and uh, hydration. And you can't just be dehydrated for a week and then yeah. decide all of a sudden, today I'm going to drink 10 gallons of water. Yeah, you got to yeah. 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 consistently way. do it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, but uh, so that's a great thing about water. But going back to your, your practice, um, yeah, I'm just so excited about, the, like, up here, right here. Uh, this this uh, photo of the uh, looks like the eye. Yep. And uh, that you know. So that's the macula, and that's what it looks like when you're when they take a picture of your eye. That's what you see. I mean, it's huge that you can. There's hope. That's what you say. There's hope. Yeah. There's wet and dry. So there's this mm -hmm. drusden that um, it's kind of like a cholesterol that starts um, growing in the back of the eyeball, mm -hmm. and that gives you the patchy um, sort of eyesight. Um, so, you know, I would have never chosen to get into that, but I've been, in, I've been an acupuncturist uh, 25 years this month. Oh, that's <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> Congratulations. I mean, and it's exciting because, you know, not that I'm all that, but most no, you things are. that walk in, I can fix it. You well, know? look, look what, how I expanded, you know, from, you know, the, the eye. I mean, that, all of this is like yeah, so... Yeah, I've been treating cancer. Um, that, you know, that's But what you was talking about uh, at the coffee shop, he was telling me about um, how ar aromatherapy, he was just talking um, with, with, with yeah, Stephanie. Yeah, essential oils. Yeah, yeah. essential oils. You want to... We got time for some essential oils, Brother Arlie? How's yeah. the time? Yeah, yeah? I'm, I'm looking at this. Yeah. And, and one of your posts here, the power of our immune system and 
and essential there, oils. There, that's yeah, it. It's, it's it's absolutely fascinating. Okay, so we got to listen to this one because she's she was explaining to me about um, the the thing with cancer and the essential oils. That yeah. that's important. That I want to hear. And that's another thing that yeah. you know. Um, Pretty much anyone who calls me, I take them as a patient because mm -hmm. I know that, you know, we live on a small island and there's not a lot of other places to go. Mm -hmm. um, and there's other acupuncturists. There's some really good acupuncturists. Um, but I've expanded because of the necessity. You know, when people come in, I don't, there's nowhere else to really send them. And mm -hmm. they've done most of the other things. So with cancer, um, I've had a couple patients that were um, diagnosed and then they didn't have health insurance. So mm. then they're told, go to Oahu, get the surgery, do the chemo, do radiation. Um, there's about a 6% to 15% success rate. Oh my God, that's... Yeah, with those treatments. And um, the thing is with cancer, the, the huge kind of secret to killing cancer is you have to get the stem cell. That's... That's the whole thing. And that when you go key. to a doctor and they diagnose you, go to an oncologist and they sit down with you and start counseling you on what they're going to be doing, I tell my patients, just, just ask them one simple question. What is this going to do for the stem cells? Yeah. And they give the same look. The doctor has the same look all the time because they can't answer it. Nobody can answer it. There's no way that chemo can kill a, a cancer stem cell. It will replicate it. Mm-hmm. It'll kill the cancer cell, so it looks really good. So I can put the water down here, and now you don't see the water anymore, but it's still under the table. Mm -hmm. So when you're dealing with cancer, if you don't kill the cancer stem cell, you don't kill the cancer. And it will come back as something else, or it will be mutating while you think it's gone. So the essential oils, the um, sandalwood and the frankincense, kill the stem cell. That's what and they rewrite me. the DNA of your body, of your of your system. So, wow. it, it it's God made everything for us to heal if we just know what they are and how to use them. And Nancy Ducharme uh, wrote a book, a very tiny book. Her brother had, um, you know, stage fifty cancer. Um, chemotherapy was killing him. He was going into multiple organ failure. And her mom called and said, you've got to come. He's, you know, not going to make it. And she's like, oh, hell no. So she went down. She moved in with him. She gave him 21 days straight of the oil protocol. There's probably six different oils that are yeah, you used say that, yeah. um, down the spine and on the bottom of the foot. And you do it twice a day, um, one with about six to eight hours in between. So one spine treatment, then one foot treatment, 21 days straight. And then you go get... Your markers It'll, tested. Um, is that the the same oil or it's a different oil? Like Each what? cancer has certain oils, but yeah. the primary um, oils that you stay with is the, the balsam fir, um, the sandalwood, or cedarwood. Cedarwood wood is much cheaper than sandalwood. And then the frankincense. And those are the kind and of... And it all differs or is just all the same pricing? Like They're pretty expensive if you go through. There's, For 21 there's days. three companies. Um, when I first started, like with Stephanie, she had advanced uh, cervical cancer and she was hemorrhaging and they just told her she was going to die. And it was, um, she went to my memorial, they did the imaging and they just said, there's nothing we can do for you. You're going to have to get surgery. And she said, I'm not taking oh. my organs out. So that, that is like, uh, hmm. These kind of um, uh, documented things that you've done, yeah, this is so amazing to me. And in, in, in acupuncture and, and and the type of treatments you do, yeah. Um, uh, and you must be really, really busy with a bunch of people coming in to see you yeah, when I they reach this stage. Yeah. It, it's how do you how do you you know juggle that uh, juggle yeah, your time. it's a juggle yeah it, it it can be exhausting honestly you know i mm -hmm. i have to take time off um i usually see patients two days a week and then the people that are really complicated or need more of my time i see them on a day that i don't have other patients in okay. that way because i gotta just, focus on that one person right no yeah. yeah it's it's a it's a you know a concentrated amount of time yeah 
and then we take a two-week break. So for a couple of weeks, I'm working really hard, and then I have a couple of weeks where you know I get to rest, and the patient rests. That that's really important for you, yeah. A, as uh, you know, someone who is um, doing the treatments and helping these people to to get your proper rest, yeah. To regroup, it's super important. It is, and, and and build up yeah. your energy again to go back out and do all the the great work that you do. Um, for someone like me, that uh, I like to say, I'm relatively good health. You look really healthy. Oh, thank you. But um, I, I do so much bad things to my body. No. Darn it. <laughs> that, that, I won't get, that I won't get into. But um, No, let's go into it. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> let's have the doctor <laughs> assess you there, that, Arlie. That, that, well, no. Um, <laughs> but, like, say, um, if, if, if someone who is uh, maybe an athlete, like, you don't have much, um, there's no pains, there's no concerns, but just, just like a massage, okay? Mm -hmm. I have massages regularly. Yeah. And uh, my masseuse tells me, uh, is there any area you want me to work on, any pain? And I have to go, no, I feel, feel pretty good. Yeah. And they just kind of do like a... Get, what, the, get the lymphatics moving. Whatever they do, yeah. you know, and I feel great. So with acupuncture and what you do, uh, can people, even if they're not, they don't have any... Um, macular uh, degeneration or any kind of things yep. is there is there like a like a tune-up or an oil change that you can do yep. with acupuncture what, what would that actually, be like it's um so in sri lanka kids start getting my daughter started getting acupuncture you know pretty soon after she was born and i i raised her on acupuncture so i would put the there's a little plastic guide tube that you put and i would just stick it right where it needed to go and then she would flick them in and so that's i never vaccinated her and i never took her to a doctor which now she thinks I'm an abusive parent because <laughs> wow, now wow. she's older and she's like, why didn't you take me? How I, mean, so, I, I took her, but, you know, not that often. How old is your daughter? She's 23. Yeah. She's probably really healthy. She got a great mentor. You know, she she is really healthy, comparatively speaking. She does have her challenges um, because she was raised with a really healthy diet. And then as soon as you allow them to go to school and start eating all the crap that all the other people are eating. So... For the most part, she's really healthy. Her immune system is very strong. Um, but, you know, if if kids got chiropractic and acupuncture and weren't raised on all the junk foods, just drank water, no sodas, um, went to bed on time, wasn't, you know, they weren't in front of the TV and the screen and stuff, um, it would be a way to start them and really provide them success throughout their whole life. Um, That's good information right there. That's yeah. super yeah. important. Because yeah. then, you know, we see people um, because they didn't have the right tools growing up. Not that the parents didn't mean well, but um, it's a tough society. Yeah, you know, you know it, over the generations, we, we kind of, uh, now we're at a point where the kids... Uh, will learn how to use the iPhone and the iPad before they learn how to ride a bike. It's true. So keep that. That's terrible. That's a perspective that I'm seeing. It's true. And, uh, but, you know, that's where we are. And so. Let's it, change it. Well, so <laughs> for my daughter, I didn't have TV. Um, see? The first the, two see, or three years I was. I wish my parents was like that. No TV. You no. know, I think because I was raised with TV and although, you know, Saturday Night Live and, you Gilligan's know, the Island Flintstones and, and Gilligan's Island. Miley Island, Cyrus. I mean, <laughs> we had the best TV. Like today it's like, oh my gosh, what is this stuff? But my daughter for the first six years we didn't have a television so she didn't know teletubbies See, and all this that stuff is and awesome. we just read you know what is the recommendation for diet right here here on 2020 post pandemic what is the diet what is your primo diet um you know alkaline water with lime or lemon or um or just alkaline water um breakfast what would, um, would you recommend usually a smoothie yeah. like uh, spinach and kale and um, some and you know maybe some uh, some greens um, it's like a green machine kind of deal all greens yep. yeah I usually don't eat breakfast too much I have green matcha um, tea are you a juicer morning. I used to be a juicer honestly I go back and forth um, so is that good it's really good for you but if you don't get the masticated um, juicer then a lot of the nutrients I think are lost okay in the shuffle um some people can't do raw foods because their system doesn't break it down. So hmm. it's really an individual thing. But, you know, basically, like um, for the macular patients and people with eye disease, the yellow, uh, orangish um, mm -hmm. 
bell peppers. Those are actually bell peppers are one of the most incredible and kale and spinach okay. nutrients for the eyes. So funny was growing up like spinach and like Popeye. Yeah. 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 They, yeah. Who knew it was a yeah. propaganda for, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, healthy eating, you know? Yeah. So lunch, let's go to lunch now. What, what would you eat? Uh, um, say, come back from a kayak and okay, I want to eat a, I want to eat a, a cheeseburger bowl or uh, um, a fruit bowl. Yeah, uh, like I, a acai I, I bowl. Do acai. Acai. I, I make yeah. my own now. I've I've kind of. So what's in your acai bowl? Uh, usually blueberry, um, strawberry, and then a frozen acai with coconut water or coconut milk, and then I put um, lots bananas. of honey on top. I used to do bananas. I got really burnt out on them. How about almond uh, almond butter? I, I haven't done almond butter. Try it. Um, I like it. Well, yeah. There it is. Yeah. So yeah, and good. then I put um, the Costco the um, the Analoa um, cereal from Kauai. I'm addicted to that. Analoa cereal. Analoa cereal. Oh, it's. It's. I might be pronouncing it wrong, but it's. Uh, Analoa. Analoa. Ana, Ana, uh, Analoa. Analoa. Um, so what's what's in the cereal? What, what's the ingredients? Um, granola, coconut, um, papaya. <clears throat> Pineapple. Is it a, isn't a, um, at Costco that a, a brown package? Okay, that's one of them, but it has sugar in it, and I can't eat sugar, so it's only sweetened with honey, and it's wonderful. I gotta get it. Well, what's the cost? Like twenty dollars? There's a no. It's like seven ninety nine or nine. Okay, next time we come, that. we're gonna eat yeah. that together. We're gonna eat yeah, that. I'll, yeah, I'll, on the low. Yeah, bring, bring the next some. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I've been using that. Um, I have such a restricted diet because I was um, born premature and. But you look at but look at you. You're like I can't you're, eat any you're, sugar you're, at all. You're in uh, great shape. Uh, Probably because oh, I, I don't I eat guess, sugar. I guess <laughs> we we gotta go to part two next time. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I'd like to, um, we're running short on time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But um, this is such a... Oh, <laughs> I'm sad this now. Is such a great um, episode. Yes, and we'd a like kick to kick it thank off. Thank you so much for coming. And, and, yeah. Um, yes, we, Dr. Kim. We'd like you. to invite you back if you'd oh, be, be, uh, yeah. you no. be available. It's so to fun. You. Are you feel comfortable? I feel at yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's great. Good. Because we know you got to... Uh, uh, she got to go on the ocean, man. schedule. And Actually, I gotta get to yeah, a patient. She got, yeah. yeah, she gotta go to a patient. She gotta go in the ocean. She gotta I do had a, a hike. I called before I came. Yeah, wow. there's someone who needed me. So I said, I'll be back. Oh, yeah. great. Okay, so, so thank really you looking. for having me. Oh. It's no. so much fun. Man. So here at the Riff. Yes, be, brother. Thank you and, so much. Uh, we're gonna go Arlie. out with a, with a little soothing music. And um, I hope everybody learned a lot. I know I did. Awesome. And uh, I wanna learn more. I wanna hear thank more you. of uh, on the next time you come back of uh, the people. the the people that you've been helping and yes uh, oh yeah, yeah. so many great stories yeah that's yeah. been great yeah, yeah. such a great yeah. thing so all right man uh, mahalo dr kim thank you dr kim with thank you so much west maui Thanks. acupuncture and uh we look west maui Woo-hoo. yes wma aloha aloha <laughs> all right dr kim i'm so that was fun. St-